We are going to look at custom theme development. In this part of the course, we will be focusing primarily on block themes. This uses the full site editing or site editing types of themes, which is the latest and newest method of building themes in WordPress. You'll need to understand what site editing is or full site editing. This is an umbrella term for a collection of new WordPress features that focus on using blocks for all parts of a website, not just the content area. With the new site editing features added to WordPress, you use blocks to create everything from page layouts, site headers that are synced across your website, and smart collections of block patterns that you can reuse. This includes a new set of blocks that are meant for editing your site, rather than just editing content. These range from site title and featured image to blocks that show the comments form or let users log in or out of your website. Blocks can be styled with the site-wide global defaults, individually in the editor or with the new theme.json configuration file. Key concepts that you should know for site editing are the site editor interface. This is where you can create, preview, edit, and remove templates, template parts, patterns, pages, and more. The styles interface is used for selecting default styles for the website and individual blocks. Templates are utilized for full page layouts, including site header, content, and footer areas. Template parts are structural blocks that you can reuse within templates. Block patterns are pre-designed layouts and unique design elements that are used for different types of pages and sites. Blocks are used for site building. These are things such as the site title or the site logo. Theme.json is the new theme configuration file that has default styles and settings for blocks. We have style variations which let users choose from different pre-made designs within a single theme. You can use block controls to manage which blocks and block options are available to users a block binding API is something that uses blocks to display dynamic data. Finally, one important aspect is the deliberate focus on improving the performance of your WordPress website. All of the features that I just mentioned are closely tied together. You can use some of the features on their own and even within classic PHP based themes. WordPress has undergone many changes that apply to site creation. You will build the entire page layout using blocks. Everything you see on the page is a block. And yes, this means that you can finally use the cover block as your header image. A page can consist of a single template, or it can be a combination of template parts and block patterns. You can create, edit, and preview templates and much more using the new site editor. Because you build pages using blocks and nothing but blocks, WordPress hides the menu links to the customizer and widgets when you activate a theme that is built for the site editor. The customizer menu item is automatically re-enabled when you activate a plugin that uses it. In the site editor, you will find a new sidebar panel named Styles. In this panel, you can select default colors, typography, including font families, width and spacing for the website, and different block types. This is also where you can create custom CSS. Theme developers are experiencing changes too. With full site editing, developers will primarily use HTML templates instead of PHP files and HTML comments and block markup instead of PHP functions. Here's an example of block markup. You can see that we start off by placing information inside of comments. Then we default to standard HTML. Theme authors can no longer rely on the customizer for global options. Instead, global styles and block patterns have more significant roles. 
how the site editor and themes work together. When you update or save a design in the site editor, WordPress saves the changes in the database. The files inside the theme folder are not updated and the website uses templates from the database. WordPress saves the content, markup, and styles in custom post types. These are things like template, which uses WP template, template parts, which uses WP template part, styles, which uses WP global styles, navigation menus, which uses WP navigation, and synced block patterns, and formerly reusable blocks. This uses the WP block markup. When it comes to templates, WordPress follows this order. First, it looks for a template in the database. If it doesn't find one, it checks for an HTML file in the theme. If that is also missing, it falls back to a PHP file in the theme. If there are still no matches, it will search for the next template according to the template hierarchy. If the user has saved changes to a template and the theme is updated, WordPress will not apply the update unless the user resets their customizations. The theme.json file is our new configuration file. This is another key concept of full site editing. Both classic themes and block themes can take advantage of theme.json. With this file, theme developers use JSON to define defaults, such as content width, color palettes and gradients, background color, text color, padding, font families, and font sizes. You use this file to enable and disable features like gradients or the paragraph drop cap feature. You can also set default values for the style interface within the editor. And you can create CSS custom properties that are used to style the blocks in the editor and the front of the website. There are a number of ways that you can develop custom themes from scratch. You can build themes using the site editor. This allows you to create and preview layouts by placing your blocks inside of the site editor. When the design is ready, you'll export it as a zip file directly from the editor's tools and options modal. You also have an option to export the theme file inside of the site editor. The export will contain a copy of the active theme with the changes applied, and you can use this as a base for a new theme. The WordPress community has also created tools to help with theme creation. There are plugins and block theme generators that you can use to do this. These methods allow both designers and developers to build themes in an easier way. In many cases, these methods will contain fewer files and less need for custom CSS and JavaScript. Throughout this section of the course, we are going to be looking at various ways in which we can design and build custom themes. I hope you enjoy learning about these powerful features so that you can ensure that WordPress behaves exactly how you want it to.